Hello again. Yes, I am going to be recording these back to back on the same day and maybe posting them on different days because my very simple goal for this channel this year is to get 12 videos out. So February 1st, I will get January's video out and so on and so forth because there's just so much going on. I can't keep up with the channel. So, but I'm going to try. So I read five books in January, four of them were ARCs and one of them was not. So the first book I read was the non-ARC, which is Legends and Lattes. I got this for Christmas and it is just, it was so adorable. It is such a deviation from what I normally read um, or what I would normally pick up. And this is like a cozy fantasy, I guess, and it follows an orc and she has feelings that most orcs don't and <laughs> it was just so cute. So it follows Viv and she's an orc and for her whole life she's been doing orcish things. She's been killing and maiming and destroying and killing and lots of blood on her hands. And one day she stops and thinks all the orcs that she knows or has ever known have died violent orcish deaths doing orcish things. And she wants more out of life than that. And so she decides that coffee, which she has tried, is going to be the thing that gets her out. She wants to start her own coffee shop and just live a non-violent life selling coffee. So she does one last job and then she leaves her criminal brothers and sisters behind with nary a word. And she goes to a far off place that doesn't know what coffee is. She buys a rundown horse stall and she hires Cal, who she finds in the shipyard, to help her fix this place up so it's not a stall anymore, it is a coffee shop. And she hires Tandry, a succubus, who also wants to color outside the lines that have been drawn for her as a succubus. And she takes her on and she becomes sort of a partner of sorts in her business. And eventually she hires Thimble, who is a ratkin, and he's going to be the baker because Cal has pushed her to start baking in addition to serving up coffee. And uh, Thimble starts with cinnamon rolls and then moves on to other baked goods. It's just so cute. I loved it so much. And who'd have thought that I would love the day-to-day, -day? like just the simple, like it explains how they built it from the ground up, the day-to-day, -day, they start with coffee, they add lattes, they start with cinnamon rolls, they add other items something happens, they have to fix it. And it was just so cute. Of course, you know, there is some um, some problems that arise. Some One of her old partners is not exactly happy that the way she left and they come looking for an item that she took that has a long history of potential magic mythology behind it. And he thinks that this is the reason that she's doing so good with her coffee shop. She, Viv, actually thinks that that might also be the case, that it's the reason she's doing so good with the coffee shop. And she's, she's hesitant to let it go. And also, there's the local mafia of sorts who want her to pay for their protection. She's like, why would I pay for your protection? Do you not see me? But it was just so cute, and I absolutely loved it. I probably picked it up because of the coffee theme, but it was just, it was so adorable, and I absolutely love it. And if he comes out with anything else, I'm going to pick it up and read it. Um, I read The Golden Spoon by Jessa Maxwell. And then I read The Sweet Spot by Amy Popel, but I also read What Happened to Ruthie Ramirez by Claire Jimenez. And these two, I actually did a review slash comparison on um, because of the style in which they were written, the POVs that were used in the writing. And so I will link that below if you would care to go watch that. And I read The Sweet Spot um, by Amy Popel. And this is just, it was it was another one of those books that I picked up because it was there. So this one and this one, they're, they're from Simon & Schuster. They're, they're advanced reader copies from, from Simon & Schuster. And thank you very much, Simon & Schuster, not a sponsor, um, 
for providing these ARCs. Um, the spring options weren't what they normally are. I am normally able to find two options in the ARC um, offerings from Simon & Schuster that just, I know that those are what I want. With the spring, I wasn't able to really pinpoint the books that were going to wow me. And obviously, like if you watch my review of The Golden Spoon, I wasn't necessarily wowed with it. But with this one, I didn't think I was going to like it. First of all, I thought this book was going to be like a third of what it actually is. Like I thought it was going to be a tiny, tiny book because the way it was posited in the description on the um, Simon & Schuster offering was basically these three women find a baby and they put aside their differences and they have to um, go through the motions of finding who the parents are and ferberizing the baby. That is not quite an accurate description of what happened. You have these three women whose lives are intertwined in such a quinky dinky way. It is, it, it could only happen in a book, or at least you would think it could only happen in a book. So the story starts off with Lauren. Lauren creates these grotesque type kitchen utensils. So she's got like ants crawling up a butter knife. Um, she makes cake dishes with other insects on them. You have Felicity who has her own stores and she also now has her own TV show and she's famous and everybody loves her. And Felicity has come over to Lauren's house in the suburbs and offered her a spot in her store. So she's gonna sell her her kitchen wares uh, she thinks they're adorable with their little grotesquery. She thinks there's a market for it. They're very artistic. And for some reason, while she's talking to Lauren, she decides that this is the person she's going to tell that she's been carrying on an affair with a married man. Now she's pregnant with said Mary's man, baby, and nobody knows and she doesn't know what to do. And Lauren's like, oh my goodness, what am I supposed to say to this person? Like, I really need her to pick up my line and sell my stuff, but this is kind of a quacky way of our first interaction. So Lauren basically tells Felicity, follow your heart. Now you have Miranda. Miranda's husband has left her for a younger woman and they're doing all the things that he said he never wanted to do. And she's upset. She loses her mind and loses her job because she loses her mind after she loses her marriage. She ends up working as a secretary at a school and she's crazy. <laughs> Just the things that she does and says to these kids and the parents is just absolutely, it, it's, it's so funny, but also so awkward to read. If you have empathy or sympathy, what's it called? Sympathy, embarrassment, <laughs> this is gonna get you all over the place because it is so painful sometimes. And, just, and then Miranda runs into her ex-husband and his new wife on the street and they're acting like they should all be best friends and like the woman didn't ruin her life by stealing her husband, like her husband didn't leave her after 30 years of marriage for a younger woman. This woman is Felicity and they're pushing their baby around and like the, the way that they're talking to her, like I said, it, it's so... It's so strange, like they're completely clueless as to how they hurt Miranda. And at some point, Felicity is like, yes, this new, uh, this new artist that we're selling her wares, Lauren, she's the one who made me finally decide that I was going to tell Russell that I was pregnant and we were going to try for our relationship. And Miranda loses her mind all over again. She goes to a store, she goes to one of Felicity's stores and she walks inside, she starts ranting and raving. And there's this lady who is not a salesperson. She's not a she's not a floor sales lady, but she has she stepped in for a moment while the second salesperson on the floor can go to the bathroom or something. And she was actually on her way out. She's I think the assistant manager or some sort of something like that. She's actually on her way out to get the manager um, a coffee or something while the actual salesperson is in the bathroom. 
Miranda comes into the store and she starts ranting and raving about Lauren's stuff and she's picking stuff up and waving them in the air and screaming and putting Lauren down and putting Felicity down and Olivia's like I have no idea what's going on here so she's following Miranda around the store and she's putting back the things and hoping she doesn't break anything and oh my goodness after this encounter Olivia gets fired because there's a video and it goes viral so Olivia, not to spoil too much, but Olivia ends up working for Lauren and taking Lauren's kids to school. It just happens to be the school that Miranda works at. And then Felicity goes off to do her show, to do her thing, and leaves Russell at home with the baby. Now, Russell and Miranda were in their 60s, and so... Miranda's, she's just, she's so angry. She's so, so angry. And she thinks it's just desserts that Russell was left with the baby. Unfortunately, Russell loses his mind and comes and leaves the baby with Miranda. And so, in a roundabout way, all these three women have responsibility for the baby. And it's not just these three women. Like, you really, it, it I can appreciate the the evolving relationships between these three women, but not just these three women, but also the side characters. Olivia's father, who owns the bar in the basement of where Lauren lives. The um, Lauren's husband's father, Philip, who has blown back into their lives after having said he was going to go like on this extended trip um, and he was supposed to go to Germany and something happened but they don't realize that something happened he comes home and then there's Lauren's mother who heretofore has spent more time with Lauren's brother's wife than she has with Lauren and Lauren is kind of jealous and kind of like I don't really want her here but she comes over to help with the kids while Lauren is creating more of these items that she's selling for Felicity or that Felicity is selling for her. And, and you just see, you see these relationships as they evolve, as they develop, as even the older characters in the book, they grow as people. And it is such a great story. I was thoroughly impressed and shocked at how much I liked the book. So, and, and then I read The Ferryman. And I was debating on whether or not I was going to do a review of The Ferryman, but I just don't think I'm going to get around to it. So I'm going to tell you about it now. The Ferryman is coming out in May and it's by Justin Cronin. Justin Cronin has been on my radar for a really long time. I wanted to read The Passage. I think there was another book that came out that I wanted to read and I just never got around to reading him. I got an ARC from NetGalley. Thank you, NetGalley. Not sponsor. Um, of The Ferryman. And I have to say that it is now on my top 10 favorite book list. It starts with Proctor and Proctor is the ferryman. The ferryman is responsible for taking people who are at the end of their life on the island of Prospera and taking them to the nursery where they end their lives peacefully and get reiterated. Now Prospera, it, it, it's in a bubble and you get the sense that the earth outside of the bubble has deteriorated beyond living. It's a post-apocalyptic dystopian type setting and you have the Prosperans who, they prosper. They have their um, not heavy jobs that they do and then you have the rest of the people who live on the island and they are basically the help they do all the dirty work they cater to the prosperans and there's an unrest that is growing with the with the people who do like the hard jobs there's an unrest that is growing and proctor gets a first hand account of this when he is taking a subway or a train and he has a run-in with one of them and they're just so they they i mean they're messing with him they tell him one thing it's a lie but they get him like so into the lie that he he gets uncomfortable and he feels bad and you know and he apologizes and then like when he apologizes the person is like no i was just fucking with you so 
you start to see the unrest and you're not really quite sure how the reiteration happens. And, you know, is it they're downloading the consciousness of this person into a USB, but then how does that work? Like how, when they come back as teenagers, because there's no actual births, when they, when they retire, they come back as teenagers or young not babies. I, I, they might be younger than teenagers, but they're not babies, and they they have a semblance of how to take care of themselves, and they're assigned to a family, and they're the ward of that family. But it, it doesn't make sense if it was just like a download of consciousness thing, because then they would have memories. And one of the interesting things about the 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 people on this island is they don't dream, or they're not supposed to dream. But Proctor dreams. And he runs into a group of characters that kind of draw him into um, the other side of this world that he lives in. And his father is retiring and he has to go pick up his father and take him to the ferry. And there is an incident that kind of is the catalyst of everything that just kind of falls apart. And you have your ideas of what is going on throughout the book. And when you get to the last part of the book, which is probably the last third of the book, and you find out what is actually happening, you're like, oh my God, I didn't see that coming. And it's just one of those books that sticks with you because after you read it, you're like, oh my goodness, this is one of those things where people talk about if this could happen, but the these other things that are actually happening, they're not things that you would normally think of. And I think that him putting these two things together was just absolutely genius. And I'm trying not to give too much away, but like the not dreaming aspect of it is what really, really cemented the the absolute like thrill of this book for me. I was absolutely stunned. The writing, I've never, it's been a long time since I've been laying in bed reading a book and it like slowly like a trickle in, in your consciousness, you know, like the, the faucet tripping and you slowly become aware of it. Very slowly, I became aware that I needed to go to the bathroom. And so I get up and I go downstairs and it's the middle of the night and I suddenly realize that it's been hours that I've been reading in bed and it is just such an intense stepping out of the story feeling that I wasn't sure if I was actually reading or if I had fallen asleep and I was dreaming that I was reading. I was actually reading. But that is how intense and, and, and like fulfilling this book is. It was so it was such a pleasure to read it. It, it. I'm so thankful that I got the opportunity to to read it before it came out so that I can tell you, you need to buy it when it comes out and you need to read it because, oh my God, it was so good. Anyways, so that's my January and I, I'm not going to tell you what I'm reading for February because it feels like every time I say I'm going to read something, I don't read it. So I'm just not going to tell you what I'm reading. I will let you know what I read after I read it. Thank you so much for watching. I got to go back to work. Have a wonderful day.